descriptive statistics and inferential statistics so we had covered roughly how do you handle r functions and most of the things which are more related to the technical aspects of r now we come to the second leg that is the statistical aspects of analytics right so as you know that statistics or analytics can be seen as a phased process wherein you start in the beginning you might talk about descriptive statistics and then inferential statistics then causal statistics and then it could be further about predictive analytics and furthermore it could be prescriptive analytics also so in this session what you will be talking more about would be about statistical variables descriptive and inferential statistics correlations frequency taps cross taps t test anova and nva anova nva anova is more specifically talking about people who are into market research so we'll be stressing more on anova rather than uh, more than two way anova right so let's start off with the session introduction to statistical variable so we'll understand <clears throat> from the perspective of statistics what a variable means a variable uh, has a different meaning when you look at this from the perspective of a database so what we would call as a column is called as a variable in statistics or analytics the same would be called as a dimension when you look from the perspective of reporting the same would be referred to as a feature when you're talking about machine learning basically they are the same so let's understand this in depth types of variables so when you're talking from statistical or analytical perspective you can basically bifurcate data into qualitative quantitative dependent and independent variables right now <clears throat> uh, again you need to understand that dependent and independent is basis the use of the variable so we'll keep that aside right now so it doesn't make sense to look at data from this current on screen uh, depiction because if you look at data it would basically be bifurcated into something like structured versus unstructured data unstructured data is a different breed we won't be talking about that as part of this course and within structured data you would have something like a numerical data and a categorical data so what is referred to over here as qualitative is nothing but a categorical variable and what is shown on screen as quantitative is nothing but your numerical variables right and again if you look within the categorical you have three forms so what you see right now is nominal and ordinal but there is one more which is called as binary so within qualitative like a uh, categorical variables so i would refer that as categorical variables you would have numer you would have something which is called as binary which takes only two forms zero and one true false yes no male female all those kind of variables and then the second would be nominal wherein it is more than two levels in the data so something like marital status which could be married unmarried don't know something like that or married unmarried separated divorced something like that right so basically let's talk about variables which has more than two levels in the data but it doesn't have a sequence of importance on the other hand if you look at something which is called as ordinal it is nothing but a, a form of nominal variable but which has sequence in it so something like uh, color of uh, light signal right so if you just see on the previous slide as we are seeing right now wherein we are seeing that chart so gender doesn't have an order of sequence in importance so for example male female right doesn't have importance in terms of sequence so both are equal right so uh, color of traffic light red orange green all of them are equally important you cannot say green is more important than red right on the other hand ordinal would be about that categorical data which has a sequence for example uh, your percentages or you can say the class you scored in an exam so whether it's past class second class first class distinction this has a sequence of importance right now again data can be transformed so something which is nominal for one person might be ordinal for the other say for example color might not be ordinal when you look from the perspective of traffic lights right but for somebody who is into particle research or somebody who is more into say the paint industry for them it might be important because the color red has higher concentration of pigments as compared to the color white so yes it has a sequence over there so when you are splitting the white light through a prism basis the different uh, wavelength the light gets separated into different spectrum and yes it has a different wavelength so if i convert that color of light into a wavelength spectrum it has different sequence and one is high and one is low 
right so yes variables can be transformed between these forms now when we can come to quantitative right that is numerical variables we basically have two scales one is the ratio scale and one is the interval scale the basic differentiation is that an interval scale uh, doesn't have an absolute zero that means if you refer to something like temperature and degree celsius or fahrenheit you cannot say that a zero means absolute zero that means zero degree celsius doesn't mean that there is no temperature in fact it is very cold over there right so it doesn't have an absolute zero it's a reference scale on the other hand a ratio is just something wherein you are doing a ratio of two things right now when you're talking about quantitative variables it makes more sense to talk about two things that is about discrete variables and continuous variable so anything which can be uh, counted would be discrete and anything which is measured is called as continuous right so if, if somebody is asking you what is your age uh, you typically say that it's 24 34 36 whatever is your age by referring to your age as on the last birthday so you're basically counting the number of years lapsed from your birth to your last birthday that's what you're doing you're counting it so when you're counting it it is discrete it cannot take an integer value or something in between but when you refer to your age as on today it would be about how do you refer to age as on today so you're basically measuring number of days lapsed number of seconds all those things so it basically turns out like 36.54 right so that's how you see right so data can be continuous as well as discrete it's the way you treat them right so now we'll go further and actually see what these are right so you can see on the screen discrete variables so example for reference is shown that uh, a discrete variable does not admit intermediate values between two specific numbers so that goes by the very same clause that if you count something you cannot have something in between so you cannot say that if i'm counting the number of students present in a class it can be 1.5 no it's not possible right because those would be one two three four something like that Con continuous variable on the other hand because it is arising out of something which is measured can take values in between also Categorical variables or qualitative variables as we were talking about needs to have nominal dichotomous which is binary and ordinal. We have spoken about this. So the screen talks about that only. It takes it takes into consideration a few examples of gender which is between male and female. right? And then hair color which has blonde, brown, brunette, red and all those things. And it basically talks about a class in the data. Yes, again, brown hair is not important as compared to black. So that is why we refer to this as a nominal now if it becomes something of importance then yes we will have have to refer that as ordinal <clears throat> dichotomous variable are variables which takes only two levels yes no true false zero one that's why it's called binary right so these are the variables which are very important when we talk about decision making and analytics so for example if a person says that he owns a phone or he doesn't own a phone so mostly when you say yes or a no which can be codified as a 1 for a yes and a 0 for a no. Now, when we talk of ordinal variables, yes, it's something similar to a nominal variable, which we have already covered, but it has a sequence to it, a higher to lower or a lower to higher sequence. And that is why we call it as ordinal. It has an order in it, right? And obviously, it has to be more than 2. So if it has only two levels, it won't be ordinal. It will be termed as binary. So that's how we define an ordinal interval variables. So uh, these are variables which are similar to ordinal variables, except that uh, it doesn't have an absolute zero, right? So basically it would be somewhere in between. For example, suppose you have a variable such as monthly income that is measured in rupee value and three people have uh, a value of around 10,000, 15,000, 20,000. The second person makes 5,000 more than the first person and the uh, and, and 5,000 less than the third person and the size of these intervals is same. So if these two other people who make INR 90,000 and 95,000, the size of that interval between these two people is also same. But the difference is in perspective. So if 10,000 and 15,000, you can say that the second person is getting 5,000 more than the first person. But there is an, another set of uh, people or audience wherein the gap is also 5,000. But that value is 90,000 and 95,000 right so it's about the interval so from the interval perspective it is same but it does not have an absolute comparison so the disposable income for this 90,000 and 95,000 guy is different and the disposable income for a 10,000 and a 15,000 guy is very different 
right and that is what actually happens it makes more sense to look at interval variables from the perspective of temperature wherein you are saying that uh, a 90 98.3 is uh, taken as a threshold value to consider that a person has fever or not fever right so if your temperature is above 98.3 fahrenheit right you typically say that you have temperature right but if you actually talk uh, to a person who is having febrile convulsion so basically a condition wherein a kid uh, below the age of 5 years has been exposed to convulsion that is called is uh, normal terms as fits which comes out of uh, the brain not being able to handle the sudden rise in the temperature now if this kind of a patient is uh, referred to in a hospital even if the temperature rises to 99, the, uh, the uh, nurse would say that there is no temperature, this is very normal. Unless and until I see a 100 on the scale, this person will say that it's within control, right? Because in febrile convulsion, what is important is sudden rise in temperature and not normal rise in temperature. So till the point it rises to 100, it's okay for the uh, diagnostic person. So again, it has different meaning for different people. So that is about interval variable, right? Now, ratio variable has all the properties of interval variable and has a clear definition of a zero which was lacking in the interval variable. So, a ratio variable will have a typical zero definition which means, so if you look at temperature again as a variable, a Kelvin scale, right? So, if you are measuring energy in Kelvin scale, a zero means an absolute zero. That means when you are measuring on Kelvin scale, if a process has zero Kelvin um, temperature that means there is no energy present right that's absolute zero so now why are these important why do we need to understand what is nominal ordinal interval and ratio is because based on the type of variable you can do certain compute activity in terms of statistical analysis so if a variable is nominal variable you can do a frequency distribution if it is ordinal you can do frequency as well as median and percentile computation if it has an interval scale, then you can do frequency, median and percentile computation, addition and subtraction, mean, standard deviation, everything is possible. And if it is a ratio, you can do almost everything. Apart from that, you can add coefficient of variation also. So typically based on these variables, you will analyze and decide which should be the variable which is part of your analysis. And that is why it is very important. Now we'll come to the second aspect that is talking about dependent variable and independent variable. Now the definition of a dependent variable is something which is affected by an independent variable. We'll talk more about independent variable later on. So for example, salary is typically seen as a dependent variable that because it's very random, right? And it depends upon a host of other things like your age, your experience, your qualification, the grade from which you have qualified. The, uh, the tiering of the college or the educational institute from where you have taken your qualification or your degree, right? And that is why it is dynamic, it is, it is random, it is dependent on all these things. Whereas your college degree is not random. So once you have taken it, it won't change. So if you have done MSc statistics, it won't become MSc in some other subject, MSc mathematics, for example, right? So it is comparatively non-random, but it has an effect on your dependent variable that is salary. So independent variable is something which is explaining your dependent variable. So salary is being explained by your experience. So let's take only two variables, say salary and experience. So typically experience, once you have got four years of experience, it cannot become a three year experience, right? But your salary, once it has become four lakh, it can strip down to three lakh also. That means it is random. It depends upon a host of things like market condition, your present experience, job, whether you have a job on hand and you're looking for a job or you don't have a job and you're looking for a job that decides your next offer, right? So explanatory variables are also one synonym which is used for independent variables, which decides or influences your dependent variable, which is a response variable, right? So we'll talk more about this as we go forward in your journey about analytics.